Hello everyone and welcome to our service of worship. And this weekend we celebrate the beginning of the Advent season. Advent uh, is a word that means coming or appearing. And of course it is the first season in the liturgical church year. And it's the time when we celebrate uh, the coming of Jesus Christ uh, when he was born in Bethlehem long ago. So we look back in a sense, but we also look forward and we await the appearing of Christ when he returns again for a second time to bring the whole drama of redemption to a conclusion. So on this first Sunday of Advent, we welcome you to our time of worship and celebration. In a few moments, we'll be lighting the first Advent candle and moving into our time of worship. But first, a few announcements in uh, recognition of the Advent season. We have several different things going. Uh, we have a daily devotional book called Arise and Shine, Devotions for Advent. Uh, this is available. Uh, you can pick it up here at the church in the little free library uh, just outside the main entrance. Uh, you just open the door and you'll see it right there. There's a number of copies. So you can swing by and pick one up. And then each morning through Advent at nine in the morning, we will be having a 10 or 15 minute brief devotional time on Zoom um, with reading and reflecting on each day's daily Advent devotion. So um, the links uh, to that Zoom connection are in uh, the email blast and available on our website, links to get to that. So we hope many of you will join. Um, we can't be in person together in worship, but we're hoping this will be a way that we can connect with each other, see one another's faces, share, talk together, and experience the Advent season in that way. And then on Thursdays, uh, December 3rd and 10th and 17th, we'll also be doing a Thursday Bible study via Zoom at 9.30 in the morning. The bulletin says 9.15, but it's 9.30 in the morning, then 7.15 in the evening, also on the Arise and Shine theme. And these will be led by myself or by Pastor Linda. Um, each week reflecting on the week's theme of rising light or reflected light or healing light or eternal light. So these are also available in the little free library. And then finally, another Advent resource available also in the little free library are these daily Advent cards. And each one of these, they're wonderful. Each one of these has a, a brief scripture, something to meditate about, and then an action, something uh, that families and individuals can do together um, in the Advent season to make our Advent worship and experience um, very down to earth and very practical. So these packets are also available in the little free library by the church entrance. Just drive by anytime, 24-7 and uh, pick one of these up along with the devotional guides. And we hope these tools will really help make your Advent experience much, much more um, meaningful and impactful for you this year. Quickly, several other announcements. Secondly, the Old English Christmas celebration that had been planned uh, for December 13th um, has been canceled out of an abundance of caution given the current situation with the COVID virus. So we wanted people to be aware of that, but families should be aware as well that there are also Advent boxes for families that are available. They're just inside the um, church entrance. So you would need to call Monday through Thursday between nine and two, our office hours, and check and see if someone's here and then come pick one of those Advent boxes for families up. Thirdly, we're continuing our stewardship journey, uh, overflowing generosity, and we hope you will uh, again return faith promise cards that you've received or go online uh, to our website, www.olccp.com and click on the giving tab and you can make your faith promise uh, through that uh, avenue as well as we continue to receive uh, faith promises for our 2021 ministries and activities together. And then finally, uh, there's an announcement recognizing that the session has called a congregational meeting via Zoom video conference for Sunday, December 13th at 1130 a.m. And the purpose of that meeting is to act on the session's recommendation that the pastoral relationship with Pastor Paul Thwaite be dissolved effective December 31st, 2020 due to Pastor Thwaite's retirement on that date. All members of the congregation are encouraged to participate. So that's the official announcement. We hope on the 13th that you'll plan to join us in that Zoom video conference. We need to have at least 60 participants to meet our quorum. And it will be a brief meeting to uh, 
um, act on that official um, step that needs to be taken uh, for the presbytery um, in terms of my retirement. All right, there's other announcements in the printed bulletin or on the email blast. Please look and take advantage of those. But we're here today to gather and to worship together as God's people as we move into this Advent season. In a moment, following our prelude, the Stephen and Emily Fry Wag family will lead us uh, in lighting the first Advent candle. Uh, so we uh, hope that you will be prepared. Perhaps you have an Advent wreath at home with your family. You're welcome to join in and participate and light the candle at home as well as we enter into our time of worship, let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this season of the year. We thank you for um, celebrations of Thanksgiving, which have happened in these past few days. And even though they have been different this season, we thank you and we express our gratitude for the many blessings we still enjoy each and every day. Lord, the greatest blessing we have is to worship you and to glorify your name as your people. So. Guide us and lead us in this time of worship. Inhabit the praises of your people. Fill us with your spirit. Renew us in faith and trust and hope. May your light arise and shine in this time as we worship and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Lighting a candle is a simple yet profound act. It is a testimony to the power of light over darkness. The light of just one candle can push away the darkness. Today we light the candle of hope. We light the first candle on the Advent wreath as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the light of the world. Lord Jesus, you came to bring us light and life. Lord Jesus, as we rejoice in Jesus' birth, we also look forward to the day when he will come again. Come, Lord Jesus. Creator God, you made the heavens and the earth. You set the planets in their courses, lit the sun with fire, caused the stars to shine and the world to turn. Life springs up wherever your breath moves. In Jesus Christ, you brought hope into a world full of fear and despair. You sent your spirit to enliven our hope and guide us on the way. We are waiting now in anxious times for the world to be made new. We wait for your light and we wait with deep hope. Amen. Amen. We thank the Fry Wag family for leading us in that lighting of the Advent candle at home. And as they have lit the Advent candle there at home, so today we will light our Advent candle on the first Sunday of Advent here in the sanctuary as well. The glory of the Lord, the light of God's glory shines in our midst. As we prepare to move into worship and uh, our opening hymn in a moment, I invite you to join together in our prayer of confession this morning, acknowledging as we come into God's presence, our need for God's grace and forgiveness to be poured out upon us as those who always, as scripture says, fall short of God's glory. The prayer of confession will be visible as you worship at home on the screen and we can join together in praying that prayer now. Redeeming God, we confess that waiting is difficult for us. We want to be comfortable in this festive season, but the pandemic keeps us anxious and unhappy. We complain about our own troubles and close our eyes to the suffering of others. Forgive us for ignoring truths we do not want to see. Forgive us for seeking our own comfort at the cost of others. Give us eyes to perceive the great need within our community. Give us eyes to see the deep need within our own lives. Turn our hearts to you again and again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, as we have acknowledged our need for God's forgiveness, so God hears those prayers and is waiting to be gracious to us as the prophet Isaiah says. We know that that graciousness found its greatest expression in the birth of Jesus Christ, the one who came as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Friends, in Jesus Christ, we are God's forgiven people. Thanks be to God and amen.
Good morning. This morning, our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, chapter 60, 1 through 6 are the verses. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, the wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. And from the New Testament, the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Beside this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, nor in debauchery nor licentiousness, nor in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Good morning, friends. What a wonderful time to come and worship with you. Before we continue with um, sharing the scripture and the word this morning, I also wanted to share with you, as Pastor Paul was sharing in the announcements, um, we do indeed have our congregational meeting on the 13th, um, which is to um, dissolve his relationship um, with the church because of his retirement. But we also are celebrating um, Pastor Paul's ministry here and Jan's ministry here because they certainly have, um, as far as I have seen in my um, short time here, have functioned as a team. And as much as Paul does great ministry and loves and teaches, Jan, um, his amazing and wonderful wife, has done the same with her gifts. So I just draw your attention to, it's in the back um, of your bulletin, or it's been in the e-blast and um, various emails of the retirement celebration on Saturday, December 12th. Take a look at that information. We will be having a drive-by celebration you will be getting more details about this event and ways you can contribute um, and show your love and honor this um, special time of transition um, for Pastor Paul and for Jan. So with that, let us come to God in prayer. Loving and creator God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the beginning of Advent for this time to um, reflect and take time and take um, time to come to you in devotion throughout the month and continue to hear your word and to center our hearts and minds on your son Jesus. We thank you for this day and we ask that the words that are heard today are a blessing to our hearts and our minds and to others. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So as far as I have seen, friends, there have been very few apologies this year 
for those that began decorating for Christmas, say at the beginning of November. I have a friend that about four weeks ago posted a picture on Facebook of her Christmas decorations and simply wrote underneath the picture, I did a thing this weekend with a little laughing emoji. All the responses below the picture were, of course, affirmations such as, bless you, we need this. It's never too early to welcome Jesus. Today, we officially begin the season of Advent 2020, the season of preparation and contemplation and for us, the season of Arise and Shine. We are beginning a worship series, a Bible study, and a devotion series called Arise and Shine, as Paul mentioned in the announcements this morning. But for this week, for this Sunday, we are focusing on our, the rising light as we begin to process how the message of God being the light to the world was being pushed out through ages and ages, years and years, out to all of God's people and to us today. The introduction of our devotion series says this, arise, shine, that's the rousing call to God's people held captive in the darkness of their sin and returning home to find the darkness of physical destruction. God's light that has risen upon them shines through them in Jesus. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, calls us this Advent season to arise and shine as the Holy Spirit prepares our faith and our lives for Jesus. The morning call to arise and shine is a glorious calling to this morning in the darkness of our broken world. Your light has come, and his name is Jesus. Friends, this last week, after reading both of our scriptures in Isaiah and Luke, I thought, you know, we really should be on the edge of our seats, ready to go running out the door to shine our light that has been given to us from Jesus into the world. Isaiah has a message to share with all the nations, it reads. And in Luke, we read the prophecy of Zechariah. What do they share and how do they point us towards arise and shine? Arise and shine, the prophet, prophet Isaiah calls out to the people of Israel in Isaiah 60 that Barb so wonderfully read. And it says, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. This is a wake-up call with an equal amount of optimism and pep spoken to the people of God who might have wanted to just pull the covers back over their heads. Here, Isaiah presents a vision of hope and of restoration, not just for the people of Israel, but all the nations. It offers this timeless image of majesty and power and God's reign that's breaking into everything, pushing out into the world. Do the words that we find in Isaiah, arise and shine, remind us of some of our words spoken on Christmas Eve in Isaiah 9-2? The people who had walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Friends, Isaiah is telling this story of those Israelites that had been in exile. They returned to Jerusalem 
And though they did not see the promises and the goodness of, of God, of Yahweh, right away, Isaiah was trying to point out that it was there. God was working in their world, even though there had been obstacles and they had gotten to a place of, of little belief. And like their ancestors had done in Egypt, they had turned away from God and they were grumbling and they doubted. I wonder if some of our life experiences right now, this year, in 2020, with all of the things that I won't even go through the list because you know what they are, if they have caused us to grumble, to see life as just one obstacle and one hurdle to get over, when God is continuing to push out into our lives the message that God is here and the light is still shining. So Isaiah continues to write in chapter 60 how this brightness of God's love is there. One commentary said, it's as if Isaiah is pulling back the blackout curtain to reveal the staggering morning sunlight streaming through the window. Doesn't that feel good? Doesn't that just warm your doubting and aching soul? The glory of the Lord is shining, so we wake up and God says, I am God. Isaiah calls our attention to the ways in which God breaks into the world and illuminates things. Look around, Isaiah cries. Pay attention. God is here. You know, our Christmas decorations may still be packed away, or maybe you've gotten them out already. But even if they're still packed away, the one thing that is always with us is God among us, Emmanuel. Jesus Christ alive and present in our world here today. And so rather than pulling the covers up over our head and, and hitting the snooze button, we can rise because this news is worth getting up for. Isaiah goes on to talk about the light breaking into the darkness. And he starts to tell the Israelites of all the things that are going to be happening in their world, that, that their eyes can be opened. And as they're opened, they will start to witness the blessings that God has given them. One of the persons I was reading this week suggested that it was Isaiah's story was as if he was telling about this glorious parade passing by because he reminds them to raise their eyes, to look away from their troubles and to look about and you would start to see that the wealth of the nations were coming forth to them. Now, the Israelites could have been very wealthy. They certainly had worked over the years um, really hard, but all of that hard work, it was their masters that had received that blessing. But now this parade was a parade of, of camels and dromedaries and gold and frankincense. Does that make you think of a story in our Christmas story and the nativity of gold and frankincense being delivered to Jesus. So here's this parade of gold and frankincense and flocks and rams and offerings and silver and, and the city would be restored and the ships would be coming into port. And then I love this Isaiah in verse five says, then you shall see and be radiant. I want to be radiant. And do you know that we always, every day, has a, have a chance to be radiant if you just simply thumb through a magazine or watch a commercial? 
Cosmetics these days promise to make you radiant. It must be a good thing. But you know what? All along, God has promised to make us radiant, to be the bearers of the light in the world. Verse 5 says, Then you shall see and be radiant, and your heart shall thrill and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, and the wealth of the nations shall, co shall come to you. What a blessing. Isaiah is telling the Israelites are around them and that this blessing is not just for them, but it's pulling in all of the nations to see this light of what God can do in the world. This wealth and all of these gifts, however attractive that they seem to be um, in this world, has a deeper meaning because it's truly a sign of Yahweh, of God's love for his people. So arise and shine, Isaiah says, for God is breaking in and God's light is for everyone and we can receive it. So we grab a candle or we grab our glow sticks or a lantern or earlier this week in one conversation, maybe we grab a giant spotlight and put it in the parking lot, a parking lot of Orchard Lake Community Church and we get up and we get moving. You know, there sometimes are things in the morning that make me want to pull the covers back over my head. I wake up and I think about the tasks I need to do or getting kids to virtual classrooms in our house or appointments or maybe we're thinking about to-do lists or exercising our morning run or, or catching the sunset, which are all really awesome, wonderful things. But if we read Isaiah and we take our lives in the direction that Isaiah is pointing us, we begin with an eagerness each morning to look for what God is doing in the world, what God might be doing in our lives. Our day might look different if we adopted that perspective each and every morning. At this moment, I would like to share with you this lovely song sung and played by Becca Broody. And um, I would like you to listen to it and think about how this great light that Isaiah is sharing with us continues to push us to arise and shine and be there for God. The rest of the song will be played at the end of our worship service, but this is a snippet. So let's listen to it now. Well, good morning, Orchard Lake. I'm going to sing a song this morning called Here's My Heart, Lord. And for me, this is a song of surrender. It's a song of offering ourselves to God and trusting in the truth that we know about him, trusting that he is good, trusting that he is here, trusting that he is light. <laughs>
I hope that song touched you as much as it has me. Here we are available for God, a great God that is ready to use us. And our scripture also from the new, our New Testament reading in Luke, we find Zechariah who was filled with the Holy Spirit and was prophesying, pushing the light out into the world. Now, who was Zechariah? Let's remember for a moment, because he was preparing those around him for the coming of Christ. In our reading this morning, the message that Zechariah was sharing with us is called the Benedictus in Latin. And it was preparing Israel and the early church for this message of promise and love of Jesus. See, Zechariah was the father to John the Baptist. He'd been blessed by the miracle of the birth of his son, who was born to he and Elizabeth. And John would prepare the way of the, for the arrival of Jesus. But at first, when Zechariah was told this information, that at their age, that they would be having this child, he didn't believe and he lost his voice. And for that entire nine months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, his voice was silenced. But along the way, Zechariah was learning and understanding that there was something great on the, on the, just on the edge of being pushed out into the world in his son, John, who would prepare the way of Jesus. And so once John was born, Zechariah was given his voice back and he had a message to share and he too was ready to push it out into the world. He too was, was trying to tell people, arise and shine because your Savior Jesus is coming. Perhaps this season of Advent for us does indeed allow a chance for us to shine as we are, are patient and forgiving, as Zechariah points out. He says, he says, as told by the coming of the Savior Jesus, who would give knowledge of salvation and to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. So as we walk through Advent, we might think about forgiving others, because that forgiveness reconnects us to the people we care about, those we don't know, those we do know, and it opens doors for restoration and peace and allowing that light of God to shine. Zechariah goes on, secondly, to also say to give light to those who sit in the darkness and in the shadow of death. Jesus was coming to give light to those who sit in the darkness and in the shadow of death. You know, I've watched Orchard Lake both last year and this year celebrate the November service challenge, which was to do service in the community for others. That certainly is a way to give light into the darkness so that people are not sitting in that shadow of death, that place where they are struggling, maybe hungry or homeless or whatever their trouble is. When we find ways to help others, we remove that shadow of darkness that's upon them and we offer them the light of God. Finally, Zach Zechariah's final word in this message is, the Lord is coming to guide our feet into the way of peace. In a Bible study this last week and in other conversations, I have heard people say that over these past eight and a half some months during COVID that they have had the opportunity to slow down. They have had the opportunity to notice what's really important. COVID time, as it's been come to know, be known at, for some, has encouraged us to value our family, 
value our friends, the outdoors, value just a kind smile or a helping hand, and perhaps see that all we truly need is Jesus. The peace, the calm, the joy, the light of Jesus. Karen Lester, a pastor, said, as Isaiah writes, we are to not just rise, but shine. This is not an invitation, she goes on. It's a command. The light has not come merely to rescue a chosen few from darkness. The light has come so that others will be drawn out of the darkness and into the circle of light. Those who are privileged to stand in the light have a responsibility not just to receive it, but to respond to it and push it out. There's a poet by the name of Marianne Williamson that talks also about this light. We are all meant to shine. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us. It's in everyone and available to everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. Let Jesus guide you and others along this path of peace. Zechariah's song in Luke pushes us to perhaps live as those knowing that something life-giving and holy is about to be born. Did you know that when we get into the middle of Advent, it will have been about nine months that we have been in this dark space of COVID? I drew the connection between that and the fact that Zachariah had lost his voice for nine months and the fact that that's how long um, we typically carry a child. And at the end of those nine months or 40 weeks, joy burst through. What is waiting in this Advent season for us? What is waiting for us to do, to rise to? This may have been a really hard season, and we may continue in it. But what if we join together and give birth to something amazing, the light of Christ into the world? So friends, these next four weeks, take a minute to think about how you will pick up that light, the flashlight, the glow stick, the torch, the candle, the spotlight, and run with it and prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. At this time, friends, we take a moment for our offertory reflection, and we listen to a song called Emmanuel, God with us.
Friends, at this time, we do give thanks for the time that we have had to worship God, for the beautiful music that has been shared this morning. We come to God in prayer this morning, and we remember those that are listed in your bulletin. We remember them and lift them up for health and for wholeness. And we also <clears throat> remember all of God's people. We remember all of you. And we think about Pastor Paul and Jan and this time of transition that we are going through. And we celebrate and we bring it to God and we live into it with joy. We also would like to share with you from our December open door reading. It's not December yet. Well, we'll go ahead because it is Advent, right? I grabbed the wrong one. It's all good. So the December 1st, we are sharing that in some schools in Egypt, Christian children are regulated to the back of the classroom and often face bullying from classmates and even teachers. Pray for these children that their school days would be fruitful and peaceful and that they indeed would see the light of Christ. Let us pray together with our prayer. It is printed in the bulletin. These are beautiful words that I would like to share with you. So follow along at home. Let us pray. Merciful God, the signs of our times are worrisome. We gather in your presence, aware that the earth groans in pain and we search patiently for your light. We thank you for your comforting presence in times of suffering and uncertainty and for your promise of life beyond death and hope beyond fear. As the longest night of this year draws near, comfort those who dread the darkness and direct those who have lost their way. Wherever people are overwhelmed by the demands of this season and the complications of COVID-19, let them hear your still small voice within all of the clamor and confusion and catch a glimpse of your light shining in the night. God of all our days and nights, we remember that the days leading up to Christmas can be difficult for many, especially this year. We pray for those who are hungry and cold. Alert us to the ways that we can set a feast for those in our community and beyond whose cupboards are bare. Warm them with your love. We pray for those who are grieving. Make us patient and compassionate companions to those in mourning, even when we're not sure what to say. Fill emptiness with your comfort. We remember those who are feeling very isolated this year, inspire our hearts with ideas of how to reach out in friendship. Bring hope to the lonely with your friendship. We pray for those who feel like the world is ending, whose lives have been uprooted by fire, flood, or storm, illness, job loss, or death. Steady us amid the upheavals of this year of pandemic and remind us that you alone are constant. You are the light we seek. Heaven and earth may pass away, but you are the source of everlasting life and undiminished hope. Help us trust in you no matter what is happening. And now we pray together using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, join with us at home, and maybe you do even want to stand up in singing hymn number 87, 
Arise, your light is come. the Advent season, this season of our lives, this COVID season, doesn't have to overwhelm us. As Zechariah and Luke shares, it can be the time of promise and hope. May each of us prepare the way for God has blessed us as he blessed Zechariah. May each of us receive the gift of salvation. May we walk in the light of Jesus Christ, and may we experience God's peace. Join with me now in our unison benediction. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Friends, go in peace, knowing that you are loved. Amen and Amen.
You are strong. 